This is Andrew Wolf, and in this video I'm going to give a very brief introduction and overview of cardiac anatomy. And uh, you see here a little um, cutaway sagittal view of the heart. And um, I'm sure that uh, that all of you remember that the heart has four chambers. It um, has uh, two atrium, the right atrium and the left atrium. And then it has the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And um, again, a little bit of review. The right atrium um, receives blood from the superior, superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Um, and it is deoxygenated de blood coming from the systemic circulation. And um, this passes through the right atrium in the right ventricle. And then you can't see the cutaway here, but uh, with, with the the way I did the cutaway here, but this would uh, be pumped um, into the uh, pulmonary artery into the lungs where it is oxygenated. Um, that will return through the pulmonary vein as oxy oxygenated blood um, into the left atrium, which will go through um, into the left ventricle and then out into the systemic circulation. Um, so, you know, the f major function of the heart is to work as a pump. And it is to pump um, blood around the, um, around the body, um, maintaining homeostasis of the internal environment or the um, intracellular fluid around the cells. So it has the function of carrying deoxygenated blood away from the cells and oxygenated blood um, back to the cells, but it also mixes, mixes all sorts of other nutrients. So carrying new nutrients to the cells like um, nutrients rich um, in glucose and, and fatty cells from the, uh, from the GI tract and the liver and it also carries wastes away from from the cells um, and then it also has the function of delivering endocrine um, uh, agents like hormones um, to and from the cells from the various glands in the body okay so that's uh, the basic overview of the function of the heart now um, let's talk a little bit more about um, the various components of the heart so the heart is made up of three different tissues. It's made up of the outermost tissue is called the pericardium, the um, inner layer here, the muscular layer is called the myocardium, and then inside lining all the chambers of the heart is called the endocardium. Now I'm going to start by talking about uh, the pericardium and we'll work our way inwards. So again, the peri now the pericardium is made up of two layers. The layer that is innermost to the heart is called the visceral pericardium and this is adhered to the myocardium. So it is close to the myocardium and then there is a thin potential space in between um, and then on the outside there is the parietal pericardium. Now I'll get to that potential space in a minute. So um, the parietal pericardium, you know, just pick a slightly different color here, we'll use orange, is on the, this outside layer. And what's interesting about the parietal pericardium is it actually has sort of two layers to it. And obviously the layers are all sort of fused together. And so the innermost layer is made up of mesothelial cells. And these mesothelial cells um, secrete fluid into the pericardial space. 
and the entire pericardial space may have about a teaspoon of fluid so it's just one sort of single very thin layer of fluid that's why it's called a potential space because the visceral and parietal pericardium are sort of connected together by this thin fluid layer and this fluid is mostly water and it's actually very very close closely close in chemistry to intracellular fluids from around the body so very similar to plasma very similar to um, intracellular fluid it has a little bit of protein and some electrolytes um, and and this fluid is made by these mesothelial cells which are epithelial cells that um, that make up the inner the innermost layer of the parietal pericardium. Now on the outside of this parietal pericardium there is a very thick uh, there is a very strong fibrous layer and it is very thick in some spots particularly down here um, there are very many strands of the pericardium here um, and actually it adheres to the diaphragm. So we have these thick strands that are very high in collagen and very strong fibrous tissue that anchors the parietal pericardium to the diaphragm. And it also anchors the parietal pericardium to the great vessels on the superior surface of the heart. Okay. And you know there's thinner layers of, of this sort of collagen as um, these collagen fibers on the outside of the parietal um, pericardium all the way around the heart. But the very thick strands are where the heart is anchored to the diaphragm and to the great vessels. I'm just going to make a little cutaway view of the pericardium here. So we have this fibrous component of the parietal pericardium and then we have now remember this is all one layer so this is very closely fused together this is the mesothelial cell layer of the parietal pericardium then we have this very thin layer of fluid in between and then on the inside fused to the heart is the visceral um, pericardium and the visceral pericardium is going to contain the coronary arteries and coronary veins that supply the heart with its blood with its own blood supply and then here on the inside uh, fused to this visceral pericardium is the myocardium okay so that those are the basic layers and then obviously on the inside of this myocardium we, we have the endocardium which is a single layer of endothelial cells so these endothelial cells sort of make up this inner layer here and then a thin basement membrane. Um, I, I made this a little thicker than it should be. Um, really, the um, the endocardium is a very very thin layer. It's one single layer of um, epithelial cells, squamous epithelial cells, with a basement membrane. Now, functionally, the heart is anchored to the diaphragm and to the great vessels, so it does not move within within uh, the thorax it stays in place within the thorax however um, it's because of this these layers of pericardium with the fluid in between these layers are able to slide against each other even though they're sort of fused together so this is just very similar to the same situation that we have with the uh, pleural space the pericardial space um, allows the heart to sort of um, move within the space while still being anchored so the pericardial space provides sort of a joint within the body where one part can be moving where the other part can be still and there can be some sliding action between these layers. Okay, myocardium, the myocardium. 
So the myocardium are, is made up of specially adapted muscle cells. And they're different than skeletal muscle cells in a number of ways. So the first way, as you can see here, this is sort of a collection of some myocardial cells. And, you know, muscle cells are going to, um, they're sort of laid in these long sort of um, branches and each cell is very, very long and, and encompasses the entire length of the muscle. Myocardial cells are, myocardial cells are much shorter and they're actually connected together end to end, very different than skeletal muscles. Um, and you know, skeletal muscles are actually multinucleated nucleated, but we won't get into that too much. Um, so the cells are very short and are very much interconnected and they also are branching. So one of the modifications of myocardial cells is the fact that they are branching. Whereas, um, you know, skeletal muscles are laid um, parallel to each other myocardial cells are interwoven together sort of like in a basket weaving formation and this adds strength in a circumferential direction so circumferential strength and if you picture the nature of the heart you'll understand intuitively why the heart needs circumferential strength um, and also because of this interconnectedness it allows um, the efficient um, passage of action potentials throughout the tissue. Now, um, so that's another nature, another difference of the myocardium is that it can um, conduct action potentials. And it does this be be between cells because each of these cells is connected to another with a series of little protein pores. So in between each cell there is a series of tiny little pores and here I'll sh give you a little cross-section here. So the action potential can pass from one cell to the next um, by because there is this interconnection here. Hold on a minute. So ions can freely flow between these cells as if they are all one. Okay, so you know, let me show you an end-on view of what these... So if you looked at a cell... From the end, there are these six protein pores that connect the two cells together. And these protein pores um, make up what's called the intercalated disc and that is um, just the end on disc that connects one cell to the next. So now I've heard this pronounced both intercalated and intercalated. Pronounce it how you like. Um, these, this is called the uh, intercalated disc and again, it's just made up of, of these six proteins that allow um, ions to pass from one cell to the next where the cells are um, connected within the myocardium. Now, the cardiac tissue is, is not the only tissue in the body that has an, um, intercalated discs. The um, other place would be uh, neurons that have an electrical synapse. So it's the exact same um, uh, mechanism in the exact same uh, formation with the six um, open protein pores that allow uh, passage of cytoplasm, ions, water, protein from one cell to the next. So essentially the entire my myocardium shares one big giant cytoplasm um, and for this reason it is called a syncytium. That means that just um, basically means that it is a large um, group of cells that share the same cytoplasm. 
So an action potential that is moving down um, from this direction to from the left to the right here on this picture um, is going to cross through this intercalated disk as if it's not even there and cross through the next one and cross through the next one and cross through the next one because this entire structure acts as if it has one single cytoplasm so the action potential um, passes along as if it's just one big cell. Now another aspect of myocardium that is different from other tissues in the body is that it is packed with my mitochondria. There's more mitochondria in cardiac tissue than any other tissue in the body. Mitochondria. Um, and this provides the um, myocardial cells with lots of energy. So the volume of these cells is made up of 25% myocardium. So 25% of these cell, of the cell volume is filled up just with myocardium. And um, if you don't remember the functions of myocardium, um, you can go back to the uh, to the early slides in this course, to the early videos um, where I talk about the uh, the use of uh, the creation of ATP with various energy substrates, um, and basically uh, the ATP is uh, used for actin and myosin binding to uh, cause the myocardial cells to contract. Um, because of this large number of myocardium, the uh, of mitochondria within the myocardium, the cardiac tissue is excellent at extracting uh, at um, extracting lots of oxygen from the blood. So you know most tissues only um, only use about um, 10 to 20 percent of the available oxygen within the blood, but the cardiac tissue can actually use about 75 percent of oxygen. So blood that is returning from the cardiac tissue from um, via the coronary veins um, oftentimes has an oxygen saturation of around 20 to 25 percent and you know a partial a partial pressure of oxygen that is very very low you know 30 or 40. Now there are some myocardial cells that have no actin and myosin in them and they tend to look very pale when you look at them and they have the same exact branching structure and the same sort of intercalated discs but um, they don't have any ability to contract so they're non-contractile um, and these are going to be the the tissues that make up the SA node and the AV node and the Purkinje fibers of the heart. So these cannot contract but they can conduct action potentials. And again they are uh, muscle cells but they are muscle cells that don't have actin and myosin. So they're muscle cells there um, myocardial muscle cells that cannot contract. Okay, so the endocardium. The endocardium is the innermost layer of the heart and it is made up of squamous epithelial cells and a very thin basement membrane. So I'm kind of giving you the view as if you're looking down at the endocardium, um, you know, one of the chambers of the heart. And they fit together very tightly. Um, they do have some interstices and actually some of the myocardium is, um, receives nutrients through these interstices just like they would from capillaries but really only sort of the first two layers of cells of the myocardium can receive nutrients this way. So um, some of the um, blood is able to provide nutrients for the first few layers of cells. The rest of the myocardium, which is going to be 99.9% .9 of the layers of the myocardium, are going to have to receive nutrients from the coronary artery circulation. 
Now endocardial cells are very similar to, in fact, nearly indistinguishable from endothelial cells throughout the body. So endothelial cells are the um, cells that line uh, vessels, including um, arteries, veins, and capillaries. And um, really, it is just a contiguous layer from the arteries and veins um, through the heart uh, and back to the other side and it's you know they have the same functions and I'm going to talk more about the functions of endothelial cells when um, later in this module when we talk about arteries veins and capillaries okay so that is the three layers of the heart um, again they it is the pericardium the myocardium and endocardium and that is it for this video